Okay, so this begins a little mini series of videos I'm going to do about Dodge pickups from the 70s and what the differences are. Um, I decided to do this video simply because suddenly I had a whole variety of them on the yard within the last month. I and some are still here. 72, 73, 74, 76, 77, 78, and 80. That covers quite a bit of the, uh, the variety. In addition to the variety that I currently have, I've got all kinds of stuff, parts over the years I've, I've uh, gathered up. Some I still have, some I've sold, so I, I've, so I think I've developed a fairly good knowledge base and I want to pass that on. channel or the playlist that I hopefully will set up and then uh, you can you can uh, watch all of them I'm gonna try to keep them in that 10 to 15 minute range so I really don't know how many I'm gonna have I might have two I might have 15 well, I won't have 15 I might have like four something like that it kind of depends so but I'm gonna do it in a logical manner as best I can <clears throat> So the logical progression and the way these videos are going to work, the way I'm going to put them up, is how you would how you would encounter a vehicle, whether it's online or whether you see one sitting on the side of the road for sale. Exterior first, what are the differences? Then you would probably get inside, check out the cab, you know. And then that's going to be the next thing, the interior. Then underneath the hood, you know, the various differences under the hood. And then the last part would be mechanical and miscellaneous oddball things. Not so much mechanical because most of the mechanical changes are going to be purely option driven and I'm not going to get deep into options and packages and stuff like that. I'll mention some of the things but I'm not going to like get into this year had this option, this one had this because that changed, changed way too much and with pickups it was, and actually anything in the 70s really, the whole deal was if you could pay for it, the the factory would make it for you and I have seen some really weird stuff that was not quote available but yet somehow was available so um, yeah I, I'm not like I said I'm just not gonna get into that part of it so here's something that I think really needs to be mentioned the way I'm doing this video you're not gonna see pristine vehicles you're not gonna see the show trucks I'm dealing with just old sometimes quite beat up trucks original stuff stuff that i don't believe has been changed or modified in some cases maybe never even worked on a day in its life in the last 40 almost 50 years on some of these things the reason for that is simple i want to know the way it was when it left the factory and that's what i'm trying to show to you is the way it left now a nice show truck it could be 100 percent perfect as factory but I don't know that because so many of these parts are so similar, you won't notice. And I'll show you, especially when you start talking about the pickup boxes. There are a lot of differences in the boxes over the years, way more than I ever realized until, again, like I say, I started looking at them and realizing that, oh, this is different, that's different, and then really started looking at all the differences that there are. So you can see a bunch of beat up rusty things. You can see stuff like this, busted windshield rust on it, whatever, you know, trashy, rat infested interiors. But so long as the pieces are original, that's what I'm going for. That's what you're going to see. So please keep that in mind. Don't diss the trucks. They are what they are. Okay, so part four is kind of the, what I was intending was part, th the other part of part three. Um, but that got too long. So now Part four here is just the cab firewall, cab floor. Um, so two things you don't really see much, but there are differences involved in all of this. And it's kind of good to know when you start looking for parts, um, what the differences are, because sometimes, sometimes these differences will play a factor, sometimes not. Um, and it's always, it's just, it's good to know the differences. That way you know what you're doing or what you're buying. If you're looking for parts, you're looking for a vehicle, whatever. So um that's what part four is part five is going to be we're going to actually move into the interior of the cab talk about those differences talk about glass whatever things like that but 
Um, I still have to edit that video together anyway. So, um, yeah, I think that's all there is for part four. Enjoy. Okay, firewalls. 1972, first year. And that's what this is. It's a 72 D300. Um, just a couple, a couple things to mention. Otherwise, they're basically the same. So you've got this little bracket here with the bump, the bumper on it for the hood. Okay, that was only around in '72. And then you also see right next to it the um, electronic ignition has this little hood over the top of it. Uh, I would assume to keep out water and moisture and stuff like that off of it. Later on, they moved it over so it was underneath the hinge, which is a much better place for it as it's closer to everything else. Okay, 1973. Uh, this is not the original engine. This is a 360 out of a 1990, so it's fuel injected. Um, so don't pay attention to that part of this. But again, we'll notice this bracket for the uh, bump stop same as 72 last year for it 74 was different um, and there is no electronic lean burn up in this area granted this has these fenders have been replaced but the factory wiring harness puts everything right over here underneath the hood hinge just like all the rest of them so here we have a 74 and it's pretty much representative of everything newer um, as I mentioned before, here is this little bump out on the cowl vent, and then there's that little bumper on the hood itself, and you can see there's a little bit of a, I guess, lowered portion so that the uh, bumper can fit there. So there's a difference in your hoods. And then as I mentioned, there's the electronic ignition uh, module over there. Now instead of up underneath the hood where, or underneath the, uh, I guess, wiper where it used to be, even though there are still a couple indents in there where they would put the self-tappers. And I'm sure later on they probably mounted something else there too. So, But that's kind of the difference in the, uh, in the firewalls. So there's a 1975. Obviously there's no cowl grill on it. But that doesn't look any different than the 74. And it's not going to look any different than all the rest of them. So, 1976. Looks like the same firewall, because it pretty much is. Well, I can barely get the hood open, partly because it's underneath a lilac bush. But uh, here's 1977. No different. Firewall for a 1978. As you will notice that it's uh, no different than the last few we've looked at other than just some of the accessories bolted on. This is a three quarter ton, so it's got a little different booster and master cylinder. And if you look really close, right kind of underneath the wiper motor there, there's a couple holes or a hole you can see. This thing had aftermarket air conditioning in at one point, so that's where they ran the, the lines through. But still, just like all the rest of them. Well, it's impossible to see, but here's a firewall from a 1979. Like you can see anything, it's in the scrap trailer right now. So, but the one thing, notice they moved that a little bit to on the firewall instead of on the fender. Uh, that I think has a lot to do with the diagnostic port and just the coming era of emissions and everything else. So, okay, here we have a firewall for 1980. It is essentially the same, minus a couple differences, and like everything on a 1980, it's unique to 80. So the gas pedal, let me back up. The heater box is the same as 79 and older. The steering column is the same. The, the uh, bulkhead connector is the same. Brakes are the same, all that's the same. The only difference is the gas pedal is different. It's no longer bolted to the floor it's bolted actually to the firewall like the 80s, like 81 and up, you would expect. So so these holes are different, and then this is a little different up here, or that comes through. That's really the only difference in a 1980 firewall. So if you're putting a cab on a 1980, 
those are going to be different either you change those over drill some holes etc or you just go with the older style uh gas pedal or vice versa if you're putting an 80 cab on something older so that is the the one and only difference that i know of in a firewall for a 1980. All right, little uh, couple little addendums or adds to the firewall from earlier. So this is the 72 cab. I'll show you a couple of the differences. One of them makes no difference at all. Down here, this bracket. This is the same on the 73. 74, I believe, is different because of the other difference. So it's hard to tell, but this little bump here where the clutch rod would come through, if it was um, optioned like that, it's kind of a sharp, it just stands out, <clears throat> relatively steep, you know, angles on it. 73 is the same way, 74 is different. Um, and because that's different, I would assume that then this is also different. And I'll show you that in a sec. So here we have a 1975 cab. It's kind of tucked in here, so it's tough to see nice. But this bump out I was talking about, you know, this is a much smoother angle. Um, 75 I can see in there. I mean, correction, the 74 I have, I can see in there, I see this. Everything else I've got, everything newer, is like that. Even the 184 I have has, has got that same bump out. So I think they once they change that, they change that. And then the other thing um, is this bracket down here. Let me move it down here. So this is no longer just a straight bracket, but it's kind of molded into the, the floor pan and then spot welded in, not just a, you know... A right angle piece I couldn't tell you exactly why they did that other than this would probably add a little bit of strength to it just because it's tack welded in, in a few more places and it's got curves curves are always stronger than straights um, and that's about all I can think of for firewall that I haven't already mentioned it's a little tight in here but this is that same 75 again and I'll mention something that I've noticed on some of the cabs I've taken apart over the years you can see if I'm yeah here we go make sure the camera's in the right spot right here here and sometimes down there there's holes drilled and I had no idea what those were for I thought well maybe they're just to help line everything up they're not since they use the same basic cab with a couple little differences for the big trucks the the 500 600 800s etc this is where the fenders would bolt to for that for the big truck so if it has the holes in there that means either maybe they thought that cab was gonna be a big truck or they just happened to punch holes in it so if you're ever curious what those are for now you know and the other differences i don't have the cab anymore but this bump out was different a little different shaped and um and there was a different bracket down down here somewhere um just also to help bolt on those fenders but you know that's otherwise the cabs are the same the floor is a little different in the big trucks so sometimes finding a cab in one of those big trucks so sometimes you can get one of those uh like an old grain truck or whatever and get the cab off of that for dirt cheap because nobody wants to deal with an old grain truck but if you've got the resources to drag it home pull the cab off and a few other pieces and throw the rest of it away or sell it then your money ahead. Floors. We'll start with the two-wheel drives. Primarily the humps. The There's two different two-wheel drive humps in the 70s. This is a 72. And, well, first we'll start with this. This indentation here. It runs all the way around on both sides. If it was a four-wheel drive, it would have been cut right about here. And then the hump would have been bolted on. But we'll talk about those later. But two-wheel drives. So the earlier ones, you'll see this right here kind of slopes down. I'll show you the difference in a second. But so this is this whole this whole piece is just a little bit lower, which is nice interior-wise, but then if you need to do any service, it gets kind of tight underneath there. And I found out that the hard way. I have a 73 which had the same hump in there 
and I tried to put a newer transmission in, uh, overdrive transmission, and it uh, didn't fit. I I had tried and I tried and I tried. It was back in this area. It was touching and a little bit on one side. I forget which side it was touching a little bit too. An inch of clearance would have given me everything I needed. So I'll show you a 75 here, what the difference is. So here's this 75 cab. I know it's tough to see because it's full of stuff. But this is the area I was talking about. This whole area is just, it's larger. There's more clearance under there. And this um, trough, I guess, where the the cut line would be for the four-wheel drive is right here and it comes up over here. So this whole back end is a lot taller and larger, a little wider on that side. The front is the front is pretty much the same, but it's mostly in the back here that's different. And I don't know if carpet needs to be that much different or not, because it's not that much of a difference when it comes to something pliable like that. But for as access underneath, that makes a big difference. And like I say, this is the floor that they kept for the two-wheel drives anyway, through the 70s. And as far as I know, well into the 80s too, that was the same. But at least for the 70s, like what we're talking about, it was that. And I don't know if they changed it, if 74 was the new, or 75 was the new for that. Because the only 74 I have is four-wheel drive, totally different hump to begin with. But we should be able to see that part of it when I get into uh, cutting up this other, this other truck. And I will show you that hopefully if I don't forget to uh, film that. Okay, so to finish off the whole floor hump thing, this is the 74. You can see the back of the hump is a little lower so this is the last year for the lower, 75 is the first year for the, the slightly higher hump on the, uh, on the uh, floor hump. Also, okay, one other difference in the floor pans. I know it's hard to tell with the seat in here, but I'll kind of pull this back as best I can. So there's a difference. So there's a difference from where the seat riser is down to like the flat part. So this is a 73 and it's 72, three and four. It's just kind of a long, uh, just a slope to the outer edge. No sharp bends, just a nice, even, easy drop off. Okay, and here is a 75. And you can see, if I move a little bit of the junk out of the way, this, the seat stanchion comes down and it makes a, a couple hard angles and then this this part here is flat it's on the same plane as the floor pan in the front um, I couldn't tell you exactly why they did it this way but they did so that's a little bit of a difference and they kept this basic design all the way through um, probably the end of the run like 93 and uh, that's really the last difference in the floor pan other than occasional little dimples that are different or some of the the strength um little divots and stuff like that so uh that's all for floors there we go. all right so 72 3 and 4 according to the parts books have this style roof light on clearance light if it's got clearance lights on and i will show you the other ones so this is the 75 and up clearance lights for the roof if it was so optioned or you know positioned the same I don't know if the holes in the roof are the same or not but they also kept this same design through I think 93 when they changed body styles and they put different ones on uh, there was I think the actual color of the housing changed because a different part number but the lens is the same so whatever differences there are in the 80s it's pretty minor